Greetings, Earthling. I am Aota. I'm working on helping as many people as I can be happy, healthy, and wealthy. Read all the stories on HomeOffice.Studio and watch all the videos to get a very advanced, entertaining education. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to make these videos a little bit more entertaining. One of the things that I've, been, I've noticed that is really messed up with my videos is it, they're kind of blurry and I'm not exactly, I'm sure I can fit, clean that up, you know, and I got to work on setting the settings on these like KDN Live and uh, Simple Screen Recorder, I think are the two things I need to work on getting the settings set right. Basically, what I did is I just made this thing here, you know, because I think this is going to be a really good tool, to, you know, and I got to learn how to, because I could actually just insert a movie here, but it wouldn't take an MP4, which is really weird, because that's like everything uses MP4, you know, so I thought anyway. So, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not doing all that great. I my I'm not getting a lot of traffic. My stories are probably kind of boring, especially in, if you're not interested in computers, you know, because that's one of the main things I talk about is the, you know, using Linux and computers and stuff like that, creating websites. I, I, I really think, to me, this is fun. You know, it's creating art. It's, it's an art. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to teach you to do the same thing. I think this is a great way, because what I want, one of the things I've been thinking a lot about lately, because I've been teaching everybody, oh, we got, we should make Linux better, work on Linux, and make, you know, work on improving Linux, and I still think that, and, but I don't really, you know, the whole reason I started using Linux was to, to get away from Microsoft owning the software on my computer, the operating system. You know, because their license says basically you're basically renting, you know, you're you're subscribing to a service that that Microsoft owns, and that's the Windows operating system. And so I started using Linux, and I, um, you know, I really don't like their license any. It's it's in some it's almost worse than Windows's license. What, it, what the, the GPL says is nobody owns Linux. And it, it's, it's kind of a communistic thing. And I, I think there's advantages. I'm not, I'm not saying it's evil or anything like that. I'm just saying what I'm trying to get is I want to own the software on my computer. I want to own the operating system on my computer. It's my private property that I can do whatever I want to with it. That's the whole reason I started using Linux in the first place. But the more I've thought about it, you know, especially these days when these corporations are trying to control everything. And I think that I'm not against them corporations. Amazon and Google and Microsoft and Apple and all the others, they provide, they, they supply things that no small business can supply. You know, their system is really valuable. You know, having thousands of technicians working on it and billions of dollars to invest in it, their operating system, that, that's a valuable thing. And I'm not saying there's no, you're not, I'm not going to be able to compete with that, you know, directly with home office, like my own private operating system or with Linux, Linux. Linux might be able to. I mean, you, know, you get millions because there's thousands of people working on Linux too. The only problem is they don't have a lot of money to work with on it. But there's some big companies. You know, you got uh, Apple. You got uh, Red Hat Linux, which IBM bought that company. So now that's kind of I don't know how free and open source that is. You know, they still have their Fedora. It was their free and open source version. You know, Red Hat is kind of a corporate software, you know, operating system that they sell to 
is Linux that they, you can buy and they, you're buying service. It's the same thing as any other like Windows. It's just like Windows except it's Linux. And uh, you know, Red Hat updates it keeps it up to date and secure and all that. And then Fedora is the free and open source version of that. And there's a couple other ones that are based off of it too, but those are the two main ones. And there's some other pretty big major distributions based on Red Hat Linux. You know, and then Ubuntu has the same thing. There's a private company. I'm not sure if that is a for-profit, canonical, that owns Ubuntu. Um, and they have, and their free ver you know, their software is free and open source. The one that, uh, the KDE, which isn't really an operating system, it's just a desktop. But their software, their, the private company for that comp is, is cute. And they make, you know, they have some professional website development, you know, computer software that is proprietary and very expensive, just like all the other ones. And, uh, and then KDE is the, is the free and open source version of that. It's kind of a subset of Qt. And uh, so, you know, what I'm thinking about lately, the last week or so, I've just been thinking a lot about if I had the resources, if I had money that, to do something like this, I would like to, I wish I had some people a team of people and we could work together and we'd probably sell computers with Linux, with our operate our own private system installed on it from the get go and set it up to where when you buy the computer that it would come with a license just like any other like the the ones do like Windows user agreement or the GPL, you know, and so it would have a license, but that license would specifically say the bu person who buys the computer owns the operating system. They, they not only do they own the, the hardware, but they also own the software. And you would have to do some work on that to make sure that, you know, because the subscription services like Windows and Linux they're updated on a regular basis, you know, usually daily, you know, but there's different schedules. Different ones have, have it scheduled differently, but so they up, update it constantly. Their security updates and they're just improving the software and they're updating it constantly. And they do that. So you would, you would have to set it up to where you could still do that somehow. Because the thing is, and here's the advantage of Linux over having everybody having their own private operating system. And that is that everybody, the software is the same for everybody. You know, that's, that's a huge advantage. That's a big deal, man, because you can't really do it. If everybody has a different operating system, every, like, say, for example, this uh, open office in press, okay, if you put it if it, you know it has to be ported to the operating system and if everybody has a different operating system they it, it's, it's just not practical so this is what kind of makes me think that eh, Linux is a good idea in the in the case of Linux that's a good way to do it is have it just nobody owns it it's like a community the community owns it and they they can develop it and stuff like so, I don't know. If the, maybe Linux is okay. <laughs> the thing is, is there's all this stuff about people are trying to get rid of the United States, and I really like don't like that. And I this this big competition between capitalism and communism. I like capitalism. I like private property and free enterprise and self determination. <laughs> I like the United States. It's my favorite country. You know, I like the United Nations, too. I don't, you know, hate any other countries. I just, I like the United States. I like the philosophy of the United States, the whole freedom, equality, and justice for all business. You know, I, that's what I believe in. 
those are my values. I've been I learned them when I was a kid, and that's I, I just those are the rules. You know, we have a right to free speech. Just, that's the rule. You know, everybody says you can't say this and you can't say that, and I'm going, what are you guys? What are you talking about, man? We can say whatever we want to. That's the American way. I'm not, you know, everybody's got to get over just being offended by somebody else, what they're saying. That's not okay. You know, and I'm not saying, I, I to me, racism is evil. There's, no, you know, there's no excuse for racism. I don't care what race you are or whatever. Anybody that's hating somebody because of their race is just stupid. You know, for one thing, it's dumb. It's ignorant. It's uncivilized. And it's evil. And we need to get rid of it, you know, and we need to work on getting rid of it all the time, constantly. You know, that's something we need to get rid of. But we don't, that, that's everything, all the problems in the world are not about race. Everything is not about race. Race is important, but it's not everything, okay? And mo most things don't have anything to do with race. You know, my ancestors, I love my ancestors. I love and respect my ancestors. I am proud of my ancestors who traveled across the Atlantic and came over here and established the United States and built up this great nation and transformed the world. You know, when they got and they came over here on sailing ships and riding horses and, and can't by, can't reading by candlelight, okay, we don't do that anymore. You know, because of our ancestors, they came over here and they established a great nation and they rebelled against imperialism and they rebelled against slavery and they, and they, they believe in freedom, equality and justice for all. And we have made tremendous progress towards those, establishing those rules in our civilization. Anybody that doesn't see, understand that or recognize that is either ignorant or lying, one or the other. Because that's just a historical fact. I've been, history has been one of my favorite subjects all my life, and I've, been, I've studied it a lot. You know, starting with the Big Bang, you know, or if that's, I don't know if, I'm, if I even believe in the Big Bang, but the beginning all the way back to why is the universe here and how is it here? What's it, what's it made of? And things like that, and I study that stuff. It's interesting, you know. Computer science. I went to school to be a drug rehab counselor, and they were teaching me that the doctors were more important than everybody else, and they had authority because they were so smart because of their education. And they, you know, and I'm I got I quit. I got out of there because I don't want to learn that crap. To me, that's corruption. To th thinking that anybody is more or less important than anybody else is corruption. That's racism. That's it's just corrupt. It's evil. And so I don't want that's not what I want to learn. You know, I, I want to learn how to help people. I want to be I, I love learning. But I don't want to learn that I'm more or less important than anybody else. And this I and now these doctors have just gone crazy thinking that they could just shut down, take over the world and start ordering people around. I never thought it would get come to that, but I'm going like, wow. Anyway, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not against vaccines. I've been vaccinated, but I, I'm against doctors ordering anybody around, even their own patients. I don't, you know, the patient, you know, the doctor teaches the patient and the, the patient learns from the doctor and then the patient decides what they want to do. The doctor doesn't decide. And that's the way it should be. That's just universal human rights. Anybody that didn't know that is... There's something wrong with you if you don't understand that. The self-determination, how important that is. And we have a lot of control freaks that are trying to control everybody and tell everybody what to think and say and do and everything like that. And I'm doing like, wow, what happened? You know, how did this, you know, I mean, I remember reading about this in high school in the 1970s. The communists were saying, you know, they were telling us how they were going to take over the world. They were going to defeat the United States. And they just, they flat out told us how they were going to do it. And now I'm, I'm watching it happen. And I'm going amazed. I'm amazed. You know, I'm going like, where's the patriots? You know, what are, what are, we, what are we going to do? How are we going to stop this? I, I don't agree with communists. I don't, you know, we, we had a rebellion against the king. We don't need no king. 
the American Revolution is a, re a rebellion against any ruling class. You know, we don't. We, it's called self-government and the rule of law. And following, instead of having the rule of man, which is some dictator or king or whatever, ordering everybody around, we have self-government, and people are free. You know, free enterprise, and we celebrate that. We, and that's what we like. And to me, that is way better than having just a, a small ruling class, having a whole bunch of poor people and a small rich, you know, bunch of rich people, you know, I'm just like, come on, man, that's, that's like going back to kindergarten or something like that. You know, we've advanced beyond that. That's like some primitive form of civilization at, at one time that was great you know back in the days the Persian Empire and all that you know that was a big deal and they were great empires <clears throat> but that they're that's primitive and why in the world would we want to go back to that I'm you know I, I'm we need to improve the United States I agree with that but Going back to some primitive form like the Native Americans, I love and respect the Native Americans. They had a great culture and a great civilization on this continent when my ancestors traveled over here and found it. But we're not going back to that. We're not going back to living in teepees and you know and you know, that. We want our civilization to be clean. You know, we pick, don't litter. Whatever you do, don't litter and pick up the trash, you know, pay some of these poor homeless people to pick up the trash, pay them a decent wage so they can, you know, work their way out of their whatever issues that they're having. And, uh, you know, and, and engineer our technology to be sustainable and, and to so that our economy is in harmony with our environment and the whole it's all one and it's all the whole planet earth is all one civilization and it, and it, that one civilization is in harmony with the earth and we're we're, we're terraforming the earth you know we're not going to go back to the wilderness you know we don't want earth to be a wilderness that's the indians they got along well by living in that where the natural earth and there's nothing really wrong with that but what we're doing now is we're terraforming earth from a wilderness into a garden and that's cool i think it's great you know everybody's like oh up in arms and thinking oh my this is so terrible and everything is uh, i'm going what are you talking about man like seattle because i live in seattle and it's this beautiful city it's like the the giant pueblo you know 21st century pueblo and and it's just you know, it's not even, it's kind of a small one, you know, <laughs> compared to some, like I look at Tokyo and I see videos of Tokyo, I've never been to Tokyo, but I've seen videos of it and I'm going, wow, I can't believe it, what's, that is a, you know, it makes Seattle look like a little small town, you know, but uh, I think it's really wonderful, our civilization is thriving, it's beautiful, and uh, the whole planet too, man. We're go look what's going on in India. You know, they got a plan over there they're working on where they want to move 300 million rural, you know, poverty-stricken people in India into brand new modern cities that are under construction right now. You know, and that's a great thing. Look at China. They've got a great civilization. You know, I'm not all that. I don't really care for their government. I think that I don't like their government, to tell you the truth. I don't want a dictator telling everybody what to do. I, we need leadership, but that leader needs to follow the rule of law. And uh, God makes the rules, and that's what I believe in. And, you know, I guess I'm breaking the rules. I'm not even supposed to be talking about politics. And I'm trying. I don't want to talk about politics. I what I want to talk about is freedom, equality, and justice for all, and and civilization, and how to make human civilization sustainable, 
and uh, you know because that's what we're working on you know keep improving it make it more fair because you know I agree with the whole idea about the income inequality is a major problem that we need to re fit, repair you know and improve and make it so that everybody is prosperous you know and there's no real super rich people and there's no poor people anywhere on earth everybody there's where everybody has to work you know that's I know one of the th reasons why my ancestors, you know, northern people are so aggressive in history is because they grew up in an ice age and they had to work hard just to survive. You know, there was no like just hanging around and eating off the land. You know, that they, they ate off the land, but they had to work hard to survive because it was so cold. They had to build houses and stuff like that and so that's why the northern people are the ones that build all the this technology and um, but every all people have different qualities and you know personalities and different there's there's like eight billion agendas going on on planet earth right now you know and we need to respect that and understand that everybody is precious and noble Every human being is precious and noble. And keep, uh, make this civilization sustainable. The most important thing to making a city sustainable is to teach the people to love and respect each other. And that's the most important thing. All the others, the technology and the energy and how we're the heating, you know, the global warming and all that stuff, that's all important. It's important, but it's it's not even close to the as important as everybody just needs to love and respect each other. And um, so, you know, it's fun. I like working on these computers. It's amazing. You know, I got uh, this. I just made this little introduction for the for my videos, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then I'll put another video. I'll put this video that I'm making right here, right after after it. See, and uh, so it's it's going to be. You know, I I'm trying to teach as many people as I can to be happy, healthy, and wealthy. You know, because I I kicked the drugs thirty years ago, and I, I've just been plagued by poverty my whole life. And I'm trying to teach poor people, people like me, recovering drug addicts or anybody that's suffering from any kind of thing like that, you know, domestic abuse, maybe, you know, there, you know, there's a lot of people that are way worse off than I am, you know, and I want to try to help as many of those people as I can prosper on, during life on earth, in this material life on earth, you know. This is, to me, life on earth is just a stage that we go through. The, what happens after life on earth, that's the real world. You know, I heard the way Abdul Baha describe it is, is really cool. He says, you know, when, when you're alive in the womb, you're in this dark, you know, small, dark place, and you're, you're attaining things that you need for the this world and that is legs and lungs and stuff like that and then you're born from this small dark place into the big bright world and then while you're alive on earth you're you're attaining your spiritual qualities that you need for the the, the real world and then when you pass on you, you you're born from this small dark place into the big bright real world and uh, you know, so that's what we got to do. And we, we want to make Earth a safe, clean, and decent place to live. You know, we want to clean up the environment and make our society clean. We want to hire people. There's plenty of people that need work, and there's no excuse. The mayor and city council people, you're not doing your job. 
These poor homeless people should be out there picking up the trash and cleaning up the city. The whole city, not just certain neighborhoods, but all, the whole entire, everything. The city, the county, the whole. There should be no slums anywhere on earth. That's just a disgraceful corruption of human nature and civilization. And the people who are most responsible for that and are the mayors in the, in the governors and stuff like that. And we need to be working on this all the time. And it's because it's just civilization is it goes on forever. It's so you have to keep working on it all the time. You, there's no like you're done. You know, you, it's not something that you're ever going to be finished. You're going to be improving the physical infrastructure from now on. And you want to have make sure you got all kinds of health. You know, I think a lot that right now the government's trying to do way too much. You know, the government needs to fo focus on enforcing the rule of law and making sure there's a level playing field. And make it, you know, because the the government needs to be the anti-bully. You know, and it needs to be able to do that. You know, because if you got bullies running around trying to do different things. And control other people we, you need to have some organization you know the military the police all that to prevent that from happening anywhere on earth and uh, and and it'd be very rapidly rapid deployment you know everything and just if there are any flourishing you know anybody starts trying to control anybody then the whole planetary defense system automatically responds and just stops it right right away and uh, you know and just make but the main thing is make it clean you know clean up the trash and just dispose of we need to stop producing so much trash you know too and we need to work on that and you know, I remember back in the 1970s, the big deal was was uh, plastic, you know, invest in plastic. I think what to invest in now is carbon fibers and carbon this and carbon that. And we're going to have carbon technology is going to come out really big. I think the big energy technology is going to be fusion. Fission and fusion. That's our transmutation of elements technology, and the transmutation of elements when you can we can manufacture as much of any element as we need. You know, we can use fission reactors to split atoms apart, and we can use fusion reactors to fuse atoms together, and we can basically make as much as of, of any element that we need. And uh, I think that technology, and, you know, and the, the thing is, once we start mass producing that, and we'll learn a lot how to do it, and it'll, the, 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 you know, the, the energy, I'm not sure which one would be the side, you know, because you'd get two things out of it. You'd get the energy, and then you'd get the materials out of that. And both of those would be valuable. And, uh, you know, and the whole space-faring civilization is we're just going to go to the moon. You know, we're going to go not just the moon, the, the, the asteroids where we're, most of where we're going to get a lot of stuff. There's nowhere in this solar system where human beings can migrate to. No, the only planet on Earth, in this solar system that has 1G, which is kind of a requirement, is Venus and it's 800 degrees on the surface of Venus and so that's probably never going to happen. You know, to have, you know, like Mars is one third of the gravity of Earth and so if any human beings migrated there, probably in less than one generation they would be not human. And it would, that, I don't know if that's ethical. I don't, I don't think so. And uh, it's we can go visit. We can definitely go visit and take a look around and do things. And but why would we go down into that? That's even with one third of the gravity of Earth, it's still a deep gravity well. When we could just fly out to the asteroid and you know 
you know, dock with an asteroid and load up the ship with whatever material we need and just fly back to Earth. You know, where we'll get, where people can migrate to a different planet from Earth would be in after we make the jump to light speed. And I think that's going to come not from the nuclear. The nuclear is just going to be a stage that we go through. When Once we learn how to um, harness the zero-point energy field, which is this some field, you know, they figure all the stars and galaxies that we can see are like 5% of the mass of the universe. The dark matter is 23% of the mass of the universe and the dark energy is 72% of the mass of the universe and so and the way that you know, I don't know how they figure that out but it's mathematical calculus whatever those scientists you know they've kind of calculated what it is and the, and I know the way they know about the dark matter is uh by calculating the rotation of a galaxy, they they're going like, well, wait a minute, if that should those galaxies should be flying apart, you know, if they're if they're rotating at the rate they're rotating, the stars in the galaxy should just be flying out of the galaxy, but they're not doing that; they're staying, you know, in in, in the galaxy, which means that the galaxy is a lot heavier than it looks. And then another way they can see that is by seeing the galaxies. Um, there could be two galaxies lined up, one behind the other, from from our viewpoint on Earth, and we can see how much the galaxy in the middle bends the light from the galaxy behind it. And by that, they can measure just how heavy that galaxy actually is, and that's how they can determine that it's twenty three percent of the mass of the universe. And um, the way they do the the dark energy, the way they figured that out is they've somehow figured out that the rate of expansion of the universe is accelerating. And then they calculate, well, how much energy would it take to cause that much that amount of acceleration? And that's the dark energy. I read this in a story. What did I? What was a Einstein's telescope? Was the name of one of the name, one of the books I read about that? I've read many, several different ones, but that's one of them. Einstein's telescope is the one that was talking about the dark energy and the dark matter. And um, so the point is that. Uh, That energy, that dark energy, the whole ma the, the stars and galaxies we can see in the universe, all those stars and galaxies are like the foam floating on an ocean of power. And we can take that power and we can learn how to harness it. We know it's there. I mean, we figured it out. You know, like on Earth, you know, like on a planet like Earth, lightning is one of the obvious, you know, Effects. That's all. It's all energy. The, the, the whole thing is just all energy, different forms. It's like the plant. The the matter is like, um, it's like ice floating. You know, it's still water. It's the same thing. It's the same substance. It's just that it's in a different phase. You know, and so we gotta learn how to harness that dark energy. You know. It's not dark energy. The reason they say dark is because they can't directly measure it. And uh, But it's this ocean of power, and somehow we'll figure out how. Because and the, 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 the UFOs that are making the acute angle turns, the only way they could do that is if they were generating their own gravity. And, um, and I don't think you can do that with fusion or fission. But you can probably do that with by using dark energy, and so that's what we could do. And um, 
You know, and the whole world economy is is booming, man. And we'll, we'll be what we need to do right now, though, is we need to start working on the fusion because that's we have a lot of we've already made a lot of progress in that area. And we, we need to get that whole industry developed to where we're just generating most of our energy using fusion reactors and fission reactors and learning that technology. We can clean up the nuclear waste from the fission reactors by our transmutation of elements technology. You know, we'll just learn how to do it and we can just run the nuclear waste through the, the, the plant and render it inert so it's not radioactive anymore and so that that's really important we need to work on that and focus on the trans the, the fusion and fusion energy and the transmutation of elements technology you know they're they're all kind of the same industry kind of thing and work on that and that will liberate us from burning car hydrocarbons because that's not a very efficient way to make energy and um, you know, and I, and I want millions and millions of small businesses, family-owned capitalists, the real capitalism, which is you know family family farmers, you know, and family-owned stores, uh, you know, the whole corporate franchise business model, I guess. There's nothing really wrong. I don't, can't really say there's anything wrong with that. I just, it would be so much better is instead of going to a McDonald's in every city in the world, each city would have its own unique culture and restaurants and all that stuff. That wouldn't that be, and you could still have your UPS and the FedEx and your, you know, your supply chain that could supply all these different restaurants. But the retail part of it would would be small business instead of big giant corporations, you know, with millions of stores all around the world. You know, and maybe it's okay to have those stores too, but it's it's got to be a way f to make it so that you could have stores and restaurants that are different in every city. You know, and not just have the same thing in every city. That that's boring. You know, I don't know how that would we do something like that, but you know, because you would still want that whole the supply chain part of it. You would still want to be a pretty big business. You know, being able to, you know, the big container ships and stuff like that. There's no small business going to be owning operating container ships, but. And semi truck fleets of trucks to deliver all the food and all the stuff to the store, and so just work on that. You know, start your own business, own your means of production. You know, um, own the means of production, and uh, own your own the software on your computer. You know, it's like. That's why I think a lot about this private ownership. Private property is a really fundamental part of the Western civilization. It's private property, free enterprise, self-determination, you know. And we, we need our state, you know, you gotta have a state that's part of civilization. It's their job is to protect all that and make sure that it's free and fair free trade and fair trade. You can't have either one without the other, you know. And so that's the, the state's job. If they would do that, instead of trying to take care of everybody, if they would do that, the pe we, the people of Earth, can take care of ourselves. We don't need the state to take care of us, you know, the welfare state. Uh, that's just, it's like a bunch of leeches is what that is, and it's a it's a power and control, you know, a bunch of leeches that are leeching off of society, and they're ruining human civilization because they want to be in control, and they somehow I don't know what the point is, they get some kind of a kick out of being in control, and we gotta just completely eliminate that from the face of the earth, and let people 
live free and equal. You know, justice for all. Justice is the absence of oppression. You know, and, and uh, oppression is the absence of, of justice. You know, and so that's what we got to teach people. We need to teach kids this. We need to teach all the kids of Earth these ideas, these principles. These because you know the principles of civilization are just as real and constant as the principles of physics. You know why? Why does the Earth orbit around the star, the sun, the way it does? You know, and all that. There's physical laws, okay, that don't really depend on anybody, what anybody thinks or opinion or anything like that. And there's there's laws of human nature that are just like that. And freedom, equality, and justice for all are some of those laws of human nature. And when we practice those laws in our life, when we follow those rules in our life, we prosper. When we try to take control, and and the funny thing about it is, is, uh, you know, I used to, I remember one time telling some, my mom, you know, I says, I make the rules in my life. <laughs> and I, I, I thought, wow, that's a profound saying, you know, but uh, no, that was like, that was a, not right. You know, God makes the rules. And we prosper when we follow the rules that God makes. And we suffer when we follow man-made rules. And that includes me making the rules in my life. That, that I suffer from that. And what, in order to get free from that man, rule of man, I need to follow the laws that God reveals. And he reveals, you know, he's been around and he's every so often he sends a prophet of God, you know, and they speak and, and teach a new revelation of the word of God and he teaches us. And we need that and that's good. And so, but it, God makes the rules and when we follow the rules that God makes, then we prosper. And our civilization will be sustainable and we teach this, it'll be part of the that teach the Word of God in school. The, uh, you know, the what's pro, pro, ha, main reason why our civilization, Western civilization is disintegrating like it is, is because they banished, they stopped ta talking about God in there. You know, and the, I remember one of the, the very first laws, the very first Congress of the United States passed, was they created, they printed a bunch of Bibles you know, the U.S. Congress, the very first U.S. Congress ordered Bibles printed that could be used in elementary schools to teach kids, you know. And the, and the founders of the United States, they all talked about how neither capitalism or democracy, neither one of them, will, they, they, they both depend on religion. And neither one of them works without religion. If the people are not religious, capitalism and democracy won't work. You end up with mob rules, and you end up with a bunch of selfish, you know, corrupt, you know, banksters ruin, ruin, ruining the world. And uh, so you got to go, to, you got to learn that religion. Whatever your religion is, you know, God, God decides what the true religion of God is. And um, so follow the religion of God and practice it, learn it, study in it. Just is part of your life. You got to just study it for the the whole time you're alive on earth. You read the Word of God, and uh, and then you create your own free enterprise. You take responsibility for yourself, and you create creativity. You know, if God says God created man in the image of God. One of the things that means is man is creative. So create something valuable and trade it in our one worldwide free marketplace. And that's kind of what homeoffice.studio is all about. You know, it's about teaching everybody about world unity. We need world unity, clean environment, safe, clean, and decent society, you know, 
civilization and and just have fun have fun making the world a better place you know because that's what we're doing and we're all doing it together we all gotta love and respect each other and we gotta teach this in school you know about loving and respecting each other all the time you know kids are not born civilized they they, they get civilized by education and um that's what we need to do, man. We need to, let's create something great, you know, and uh, let's have fun doing it. Make it nice and beautiful and, and, uh, and fun, you know. And so people can travel around the, anywhere in the world and have fun, play, play. You got, you got to play, you know, take some time to play and, uh, you know, be able to travel around the world. Everybody will be able to travel around the world. And they'll be, not only can they, do they have permission to do it, but they will be able to do it financially and material. You know, they'll be they'll, they'll have the means to do it. Just because the economy will be working in all this corruption of selfish ambition. Selfish ambition is the dark side of human nature. And, uh, and when we... You know, we'll kind of get rid of that. We probably will never get totally get rid of it, but we we get kind of tr by education in school. Kids go to school and they learn, and we they just teach the truth. You know about everything. Science and religion are complementary aspects of the search for truth. You know, science is our search for truth about natural history. Religion is our search for truth about spirituality, and and we need both of them. Are, they're the heads and tails of our search for truth. You can't have either one without the other. Either one without the other is a half truth. You know, science without religion is materialism. Religion without science is superstition. You know, you gotta have uh, both to have the whole truth and uh, seek the truth and uh, at all times and under all circumstances seek the truth and uh, you know it's like have fun building your website build your website that's one way you know there's a whole bunch of different ways I like network marketing and I've never been successful at network marketing but the reason I like it is because the the way you succeed at network marketing is by helping other people succeed. And the more people you help, you know, succeed, the more successful you become. And so I like that business model, but it's pretty hard. You know, I've never been able to do it. I'm not much of a salesman, unfortunately. I'm not a very good salesman. I'm not a very good actor. I think I'm a pretty good storyteller, but... I'm not sure I'm a, even a very good storyteller. I think the content of my stories is really good. The presentation of the content is not so good. And I'm working on I'm going to try to improve that. I, I agree. I do need to try to liven these stories up to where <laughs> they're more, I don't know. I'm talking about important stuff, and it's, 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 this is a really advanced education I'm talking about here. Most people don't even, the, the ideas I'm talking about are not, nor, they're not common on earth yet. They will be, you know, and of course I have my own weird, probably not very good you know, version of the ideas. They're not my ideas. World unity is, you know, I, I, I believe in Baha'u'llah, and he's the source of all this information. Now, you know, not all of it. I study everything. I've read the writings of every major religion on earth over and over again. Like the Bible, I've read the Bible from start to finish five times, the Quran four times, the Bhagavad Gita many times, you know, all kinds of re religious literature, all kinds of scientific literature about psychology and, you know, biology and physiology and stuff like that. Health, natural health, you know, I like the natural health. And um, 
so I have valuable knowledge that I'm sharing with the, my audience. I don't have a very big audience right now. Hopefully that will, will improve. I'm kind of working on, I've got some good experience from working on this this summer. And I, because I start this, I know it's, it was April 1st, because I was thinking, man, this is a bad day to start this business. Yeah. My very first video, or no, was it a video? I think it was the videos. It was the first video was on a April 1st. But I, I started, it was in February when I started writing the book, Home Office Studio. Uh, the book I've been writing on that for years. But I put the, started putting the book together using uh, Scribus. You know, and I used Scribus to make it and made the book and got it published on lulu.com. And, you know, it's my first book. It's, you know, not very great. You know, it's, it could definitely be improved. But, um, you know, it's my first book. Hopefully I'll be able to write other books soon here. I, uh, I uh, yeah, I'm having fun doing this. This is fun. Keep writing. Keep writing your stories and watching your videos and uh, creating content for your website. It's like your store, online store. Join in this and help me get this thing started. I've got the book for sale right here. I, get, I, I accept donations. You know, anybody that thinks this is a good idea to teach poor homeless drug addicts, you know, how to be prosperous, you know, happy, healthy, and wealthy. That's what I'm trying to do, and I think I have a lot to say, a lot of good information that I got from reading. You know, those books behind me are, the, are, are a tiny fraction of the books I've read about different things, you know, computers and natural hailing and you know, business and, you know, religion and philosophy and psychology and all that. And I've just, I've been doing it my whole life. I like to read and I've been, I'm trying to, I, I'm working on making these videos more entertaining. I think they're already educational. I'm not sure how entertaining they are. I, I, you know, I know most people think, uh, they probably think I'm crazy or something. And maybe I am a little crazy, but I, I think the knowledge I'm sharing is very valuable. It's very advanced and very valuable, entertaining education. So enjoy and uh, come back often because I'm adding new stories all the time. And uh, read, you know, here's just go down through here. Here's the stories over here. You know, some of these, like the, the ones that if they if it doesn't have a, like this one right here, that is the story. This one here has got a couple different stories, and these all these are got different stories. You know, this one here, installing Linux is a story, licensing is a story, artificial intelligence is, but all these, these are the stories. You know, and there's all different kinds. You know, this is the book that I wrote, you know, before I really started working on the website, I built it, I wrote this book, and uh, this is the only place it's ever been published. It's a book about the whole entire cosmology, how life evolved on Earth, human, uh, human you know, humidity, you know, the civilization and spirituality and you know United Nations 